Hi, Alex Kais here, artist and realtor. Let's go look at some houses. There's a lot of restrictions right now if you want to go out and look at a listing. Okay, driving while talking is a lot harder than it looks. I'm gonna pull over. Here's my disclaimer. If you don't need to go out and house shop right now, you should stay home. Most listing agents are requesting that only pre-approved, properly vetted home buyers actually go into a house. And the multiple listing service has outright banned open houses altogether and is requiring appointments for all viewings. However, if you need to move right now, I'm offering virtual walkthroughs and we can actually tour houses if we maintain proper social distancing protocols. But today I'm out and about by myself, so we're just gonna look at a few houses from the car. Welcome to Ballard, a super interesting neighborhood because of how diverse it is. You see, there's been a ton of townhouse infilling in the past few years. For better or worse, developers are taking down a lot of houses and putting multiple townhouses on the same lot. But in between these tightly packed developments, there are also these beautiful 100-year-old homes. So there's a lot of diversity and density. Some people like this because it allows small local businesses to be sustained near your home, but it also means more cars and less yard space. One of these townhouses are $599. This house is for sale for $799. This one for $815. And this one for $999. Yes, houses are expensive. So is everything in Seattle. Okay, here's a good one. This one's actually 115 years old. Listed at 860, it certainly looks like it has a lot of chimes in the photos. But how do you know if it's a good price? Well, let's go back to the office and dive into some data. As quarantine in Seattle continues, the housing market's becoming increasingly difficult to decipher. The MLS is full of lagging data because today's sales were they're all negotiated a month ago. That's why I've been tracking weekly data to get a more timely look at the Seattle real estate market. I've only been doing this for a few weeks now, so it's hard to see any trends yet. But let's compare those, these numbers to last month. In March, we had 862 homes go pending, whereas we've only seen 159 in the first two weeks of April. March had 1,260 new listings go live, while this month we've seen 320 so far. So, it looks like the market's slowing, doesn't it? All the numbers are down, and if you've looked at listings lately, there just isn't that much available. And that's because people are either temporarily removing their homes from the market, or waiting to go live until things pick up. I still don't have all the furnishings I need since we just moved into this new office space. So I've embarked on a few building projects. I still need a coffee station though. Probably should have started with that. While I wait for my water to boil, how do we use all this data to evaluate that 1905 Ballard house? Well, this certainly informs our decisions. We know that both supply and demand are low, but the market isn't dictated by how high and low these numbers are. Instead, the relationship between the two. I've always said it's best to buy during the gap between number of sales and number of listings. Next, if we look at all the homes that went pending in Ballard in the last week and average how long it took them to go pending, it comes out to eight days. That's pretty fast. So what does all of this mean? Well, listings are coming off the market and we're probably not gonna see as many sales or new listings this month. You may see headlines soon saying that the market's crashing, but really things aren't all that dire. The listings that are out there are selling pretty quickly. If you've seen my past videos, I like to look at the list price to sales price ratio. This number gives a good idea of how much competition there is out there. 
but unfortunately it's an impossible number to gather in real time because real estate brokers just aren't gonna reveal a sales price for a transaction that hasn't closed yet. So we'll just have to wait until May to see April's sale prices. So instead we'll have a look at a few comparable sales in the same neighborhood. Here are two houses that sold recently in Ballard that are similar size, age, and condition. Both sold for slightly above list price, but that was before a global pandemic. So my final evaluation on this house is, oh, my water's done boiling. Oh yes, stating a very definitive answer to a very cryptic process. You see, it's pretty easy to come up with a value for a house. All you have to do is run the numbers. And this house is fairly priced and in line with how we see the market moving. But when I'm putting together an offer, then suddenly there's people and emotions involved and things can get very hot very fast. Sellers have expectations that we have to try to divine. Buyers have budgets, plans, and needs. As the buyer's agent, I'm trying to come up, get the house for as low as possible, and the listing agent wants it for as high as possible. This job would be a lot easier if there weren't people involved. So I never actually answered the question, how is the market? The housing market is much quieter right now than last month and last year, but it's still moving pretty quickly. When things pick up again, there's going to be a lot of pent-up demand and people waiting to list their house, and the market will heat up again very quickly. So, if you're looking for a home in Seattle, send me a message and we'll talk about how to get started. Bye.